Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage four of Dolphin A 2024. Today is the individual time trial, the race of truth. And at 34.5 kilometers long with three, we'll call them climbs in today's race, but first two at about two and a half kilometers, right around 3%. They're not super stiff. The final 500 meters, it's getting up there at around 500 or 5%, excuse me. So it's got a little bit of a bump at the finish of today's race and lumpy and bumpy throughout the course. It's an ideal time trial course. It's fast roads, a little bit technical through a few of the turns, but the climbs aren't super difficult, especially if you can carry some speed in there, but it is the race of truth. And this should be a stage that we start seeing who the GC guys really are here at Dolphin A when it's all said and done after this stage four here of the individual time trial. We're gonna start knowing who's a little bit more on form because Primoz Roglic, he, we don't know where he's at after that stage four crash at the Basque Country and every interview he gives, it's always about using some race, almost like a training race, getting used to his teammates and stuff, and then finding form to get ready for the Tour de France. When he's in the big races, he doesn't talk the same way as he does at these smaller races, but he really doesn't help you out in his interviews at all. When the racing gets going and the cameras come on, it's Josh Tarling in the hot seat. He's just about 42 minutes and some seconds, and he's had a fast time. As you can see, he's foaming at the mouth, so he went 100% out there. When we start looking at some of the other riders, it's Neil, Niels Pallett from UAE team members that the cameras latch onto and I focus on while sitting on the Chesterfield. He's coming into the left turn. Then he can't make the turn. He has to shoot off the road and just miss the fencing there, and luckily he's got an opening to exit. I don't know exactly why Niels Paulette was going 100% on today's individual time trial stage four. Don't know why he was attacking on stage one, but at this moment, he's definitely a clear knucklehead because once he does a U-turn, turns back onto the course, he'll cross the line about two minutes down, but he'll be in second place. This seems like a waste of energy to me. He's not a GC guy. He's not gonna win today's stage at all, so I don't know what he's doing up here if you have Ayuso as a teammate. And if you look at the interviews from Tim Wellens in earlier stages, Tim Wellens says that he's here to race for Juan Ayuso. They're not interested in stages, but yet here's Niels Paulette riding 100%. All right, the next knucklehead I'm gonna call out, Bora Hans Gross Sobrero. Yesterday at the finish in the last 900 meters, it was Sobrero that was closing the gaps up to Chris Nylans from Israel Premier Tech attacking under 900 meters to go. It was Sobrero doing a magical job, and I said he could be a super domestique. He rode good on stage two. He rode fantastic yesterday, but now he's a knuckle here, here on stage four because he's going all out to the line. He's about a minute and 27 seconds, minute and a half back on Josh Charling's time. This puts him in the second, so we got the three podium guys early here on stage four, but second and third guys, you guys are both knuckleheads. No reason to ride this hard today, especially Sobrero and Niels Paulette, but Sobrero, you got Primoz Roglic on the team. Jai Henley's here, you got Vlasov here, and you're 10 minutes down on general classification after today's stage is all said and done. There's no reason that you should have ridden that hard. All right, let's start focusing on some other guys because Nelson Palace has left the ramp and Remco Ebnepol's leaving shortly after the American rider from EF Education. But let's focus on Remco because the cameras are all over the Belgium kit. He's flying 61 kilometers an hour going through the corners. You see the little left, right zigzag as he's shooting through that. He's gonna catch Andreas Krohn from Lotto soon, soon into his ride. And then shortly after that, we see the first time check. He's up two seconds on Josh Tarling. So Remco Abnepol's got some flying form in the first 10 kilometers. Once he's out there and he's still drilling it, he's gonna catch the Astana rider. That's gonna be Fortunato. As he catches and passes him, he's putting in some solid time. And then the cameras go back to the ramp as we see Ayuso from UAE Team Emirates get ready to leave the ramp. Up front, we got cameras go back and find Remco. They got the eye on Remco throughout all of today's stage four. There's no doubt about it. The Belgian kid is flying. He comes into the second time check, though. Oh, man. He's point. Eight, nine of a second down on Josh Tarling's time. So he's lost about three seconds between the first time checks and the second time check. But the Belgium kid knows it's a little bit hillier at the finish of today's stage four. So maybe he's saving something in the bank. As you see him coming in the one kilometer to go, there's pseudo quick step car on the left because he's catching up to Ilham Von Wilder. That's his teammate up there just in front as he's coming in about 500 meters to go. I guess he's not racing for Ilham Von Wilder in later stages here of Dolphin A because he's flying 
in on the pedals, comes in the 200 meters to go. Doesn't catch Elon Van Wilder, but look at the green sign there. He's 30 seconds, 30 seconds in the clear at this moment to be able to cross the line in 200 meters. So he's flying to the finish, comes up 17 seconds faster than Josh Tarling, the Enos rider. Josh Tarling, we see him getting up from the hot seat because that now it's going to be kept warm here from Rimco Evnepoel with the first time here and the fastest of the day so far. He ran under 42 minutes. Now we start looking at some of the other riders out on the course. It's Jorgensen out there and Primoz Roglic just got done leaving the ramp. With Primoz Roglic leaving the ramp, with Derek G leaving the ramp, we know all the riders were out there on course as Rimko Evnepoel was crossing the line, putting himself in the hot seat. But is anybody a threat? Well, the cameras start finding guys back there like Primoz Roglic. He's lost 26 seconds to the Belgium kid from Pseudo Quickstep. But what's happening to Derek G? Derek G, he's 37 seconds down. When we start coming through some of the time checks, Ayuso crossed the time check in fourth, but he's almost a minute, basically 58 seconds back from Remco Abnepol, so he can't certainly break, make up that kind of time. We start looking at some of the other guys. Jorgensen's crossing the time check 52 seconds down. So there's nobody back there that stands a chance of knocking off Remco Abnepol if you're sitting on the Chesterfield right now for stage four's individual time trial. You know the only hope is Primo Primoz Roglic. Once Primoz Roglic comes up to the second time check, he's 30 seconds, 30 seconds back from the time of Remco Evnepoel. But this is actually not a bad sign. Remember, he crashed in yesterday's stage three of Dolphin A, so maybe the first 10 kilometers he's a little bit stiff. Now he's only lost four seconds there to Remco Evnepoel. Is he going to win today's stage? If you're sitting on the hot seat, you don't have much hope for Primoz Roglic or any of the other competitors out there because they're all about 50 seconds plus back from Remco Evnepoel after they cross the time checks. But what we're most curious in, how much time will Remco Evnepoel keep or make on Primoz Rogac at the finish of today's race. Well, we got some other guys that have to cross the line first because Davi Godu from FDJ, he's going to lose a ton of time when he crosses the line. He's four minutes back. Next rider to cross the line, Ayuso sprinting all the way to the line. He's fourth on today's stage, but he's losing one minute and 27 seconds to Remco Evnepoel. As we start looking at the next rider, it's Lascano from Movistar. Lascano's having a fine ride here to put himself fifth crossing the line, but what's happening to the other GC favorites as we look further back, it's Vlasov in eighth as he crosses the line. Then we're going to see Carlos Rodriguez seventh on today's stage, but it's not enough time as he's one minute 41 seconds back from Remco Evnepoel. Next rider coming across, Ciccone, 33rd on the stage. His GC hopes are, of course, gone. But Teo Gegenhardt crossed the line earlier in fourth, 38 seconds, 38 seconds back, and that'll put him in 10th when the stage is all said and done. So what's happening up to Primoz Roglic? What's happened in the Jorgensen who was out there flying, catching guys? Jorgensen was passing by guys on today's individual time draw. He'll put on a fine ride. He'll cross the line third on today's stage at this moment, one minute and seven seconds back from Remco Evnepoel. Now we see Primoz Roglic. He's flying coming into the finish, but he's still losing time. Time on Remco. As he crosses the line, he loses 39 seconds to the Belgium kid from Pseudo Quickstep to cross the line third on today's stage. He'll finish third when it's all said and done because the next guy's crossing the line. Well, Derek G put on a very good show and even caught Magnus Cornelsen back there who's losing time all over the place. But once Derek G crossed the line, he crosses the line for sixth on today's stage and only lost one minute and 24 seconds. So Derek G, the Canadian rider from Israel Premier Tech, he's starting to look like a GC rider here in 2024. Now we'll see the interview from Rimko Abnerpol. He says he's going to have to take it day by day. And this is true. A time trial specialist, which is what I believe Remco Abnepol is first and foremost, he is a time trial specialist. Time trial specialists always go good in TTs unless they're really, really bad. But it doesn't mean they'll always go good in the mountains. It is a very good sign that he put 39 seconds, though, into Primoz Roglic. But when we start looking at his team, Elon Van Wilder lost a lot of time today. Uh, Landa lost some time today. So he may or may not have a great team here going into the last three days. And we don't know exactly after today's individual time trial if Remco Ebnepoel is really at his best because when the rider's at his best and he's a time trial specialist, you got to wait till you see him in the first mountain stages. And there's three hard mountain stages coming after tomorrow's stage five, which I believe will be a sprint stage. But one thing to pay attention to here in the top 10, when we start looking at all the GC guys, Sepp Kuss had a miserable time here. He lost over three and a half minutes. So Visma Lisa Bikes rider Sepp Kuss 
he's not going to be riding GC unless he can get up in a break. And we haven't seen the form from Sepkus throughout 2024 where I believe we can see him get in a break and then climb with the best riders on the three last mountainous monster stages here at Dolphin A. Of course, he will get another rest day in tomorrow's sprint stage if he chooses to race it smart because I think Liddell Trek, Mads Pedersen, is going to take all the weight of Liddell Trek's pressure and put it on his shoulder and is going to try to win tomorrow stage five to back up that magnificent win he had on stage one. One thing, though, when you look at the top 10 finishers here, they're all from different teams. It's pretty rare to come into an individual time trial of this quality of field and see 10 riders all from different teams. Now, when we start talking about general classification, we saw stage one, Mads Pedersen won. We saw stage two, Magnus Court Nelson won. We saw stage three yesterday, and that was Derek G that was wearing the race leader's yellow jersey in today's individual time trial. So we know he won yesterday. And then Remco Evnepoel, that's four different winners, four different race leaders, but 10 different teams finished on today's time trial and different without any teammates in that top 10, which tactically is gonna have a big effect on the races after tomorrow's stage five, where Liddell Trek will control everything. But once we get into six, seven, and eight, with so many different teams, we can see negative racing. Someone from the 12th, 11th, 10th might start attacking, but then you might start seeing the fifth team on GC start right. Who knows? We have seen it before. Remember the Giro d'Italia, Bahrain Victorious, Tiberi's team? They rode and protected fifth, and he was only sixth when they first started riding. So we might see something like that, or we might see something where maybe all the teams just go, nope, we're going to see exactly where Remco Evnepoel's form is. And that's why in the interview, Remco Evnepoel's not certain exactly where his form is. He says he's going to take it day by day and see how it works out because of the three hard mountain stages. Tomorrow's stage should be a sprint stage. But remember, if you see Liddell Trek and you see AG2R Sam Bennett's team in that front group of breakaway guys, there's nobody back there that's going to want to chase and pull it back. So maybe it won't be. But if I had to bet my house, i say it's a field sprint. Mads Pedersen, Sam Bennett work together with those two teams, control the race. Then we go into the mountain stages. That's where the action's really going to start here at the Dolphinet. And we'll find out exactly for certain where Remco Evnepoel's form is because, like he said, day by day means he's not 100% sure exactly where his fitness is. And Primoz Roglic's form looked, actually looked really solid today if he took away that first 10 kilometers. And remember, like I said, he crashed in yesterday's stage, so he'd be really stiff. Then he would have been loosening up as the stages, as today's stage four progressed and he got further into the TT. So that means he could still come good in these mountain stages. 39 seconds is not impossible if Remco Evnepoel's form is not as sharp as we've seen in the past. If it is, well, this race is already wrapped up, but I don't believe he's on 100% form just yet. But I believe Primoz Roglic, Remco Evnepoel are looking on fine form to come into the Tour de France this year in 2024. Ayuso lost a little bit more time than I would have liked to see today at almost a minute and a half. So that, that rider's maybe got to be a little bit more concerned about where his form is once we get into the Tour de France. But at this moment, as long as he's progressing, it's solid. But UAE team members, you did a ton of work. And in stage two and three for Ayuso, and Tim Wellen said it, they're racing for Ayuso. Today, one minute, 27 seconds back, that's a lot of time for Ayuso. That tells me that he's not 100% on form either. So Remco Evnepoel, you might not have to worry. Maybe everybody here is not 100% on form because when it's all said and done, it looks like this is the training camp right here to get everybody ready for the Tour de France. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Tomorrow, Stage 5 is coming soon. Will Mads Pedersen's Liddell Trek team control the race and Sam Bennett jump in? I believe they will, but tune in, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon.